Many managers and staff are put in a position where they have to prepare a business case and they need to put it forward to either the finance manager or the CEO or even the board and it can be quite scary so you need the skills and I have with me Suzanne Dvorak who is the CEO of a very successful health organisation and Suzanne you've been in a position where you've both had to put forward a business case, many, to succeed with your board, but you've also been receiving a lot of business cases. Can you tell us what exactly is a business case? For me, a business case is a pitch. It's a pitch of an idea or an initiative to someone who could fund it or back you in getting that initiative um, seen through to its conclusion. And what sort of skills does someone need to be able to put forward a good case? I think they need to be, they need to be a thinker, they need to be able to come up with the ideas, but they also need to be able to see that through to its conclusion, which is usually a, in a written submission to their manager. They need to be able to have an idea, but also understand how that idea will fit into the overall company. What are some of the mistakes that people make in putting together a business case? Whilst you have to know your local market, you also have to know what the overall business is wanting to achieve in that particular time period, be it a year or be it five years. So there's no point putting a business case to someone that is so far off goal uh, during that period of time that it won't be received with any interest. And despite the fact that it may be a terrific idea, if it's not going to help achieve the company objectives at that time, it won't get, it won't get a look in. So you probably receive business case and proposals all the time. What sort of things have upset you or disappointed you when you've looked at them and perhaps you've sent them back to people? Very basic things upset me the most in that where people haven't thought through their ideas. So they have an initial idea, they think it's a great idea, but they haven't necessarily thought through what the impact will be on the team, on the, on the company and on the organisation as a whole. So it's great to have a good idea, that's the start, but then how is that idea going to be translated into action and into business? And sometimes people present me with a business plan and then want me to do the thinking for them. Um, whilst I quite like you know, to do the thinking, it always helps if someone has put that time and effort into it before it comes to me so that we can then discuss it and, and make it work together. Now, people often put cases forward in writing and that would be the most obvious, but what sort of things do we see in terms of the mixture of in writing, using the phone, um, doing it by email versus face to face? Are there do's and don'ts with those? I think like everyone who is constantly receiving approaches of one, one kind or another, my in-tray and my inbox these, these days in the Outlook is always full and it may, may not make it a priority. So someone might send me something thinking it's a priority for them, it's not a priority for me. I would suggest that they seek buy-in before they go to the time and effort of putting it into writing. Also, they might have a great idea and it needs to be slightly tailored to fit in you know, for greater success and fit in with the overall business plan. So are you saying the first approach would be over the phone or face to face before putting something in writing? I do, definitely. I think communicate with the person who is going to be receiving the business case and, and see if you can get their buy-in first because someone is always going to, be, to look at it uh, more positively if they feel that they've had some, some input into it. So yeah, definitely make the first approach by phone. Also know, as I said earlier, know your market. So speak to your team if you're putting together a, a case or a scenario that impacts on a certain area, of, in, in my case in Australia, then I want to know what you know about the area in the Sunshine Coast, you know, what our competitors are, what likely impact this is going to have on our business if we do invest I I in this initiative. So if we look at the mistakes that people make, obviously the kind of things they do is that they don't know their goals clearly. What about the actual length? Are there mistakes made in the actual proposal itself? Proposals are always too long and I think that you need to be able to say what you want to say in, in two pages. Uh, you need to have what your, what your idea is, what your objectives of that idea are and how you're going to execute it and of course you need to have an overall cost scenario. I don't think when you're making the initial approach you should go into huge detail about exactly who's going to be executing it and line by line budget items but an overall cost and an overall impact and an overall time frame um, and what is this going to do for the company? If this, if this idea or initiative is invested in, what returns will the company get? 
Okay, so let's run through what the process is for yep. preparing a business case. Mm -hmm. What's the first step? The first step is, is to talk to the people who will be directly impacted by the idea, not just the manager or the person you're submitting it to, but the people that you work with. For example, we um, have just recently given out free condoms via text message on a mobile telephone. And when that idea first came up, it seemed a little bit too ludicrous. You can't give out condoms by m mobile phone. But then by talking to the people that we're working with about you know, uh, television stations, radio stations, um, uh, the, the recipients, the adolescents who'd be receiving the condoms, talking to all of those people first to find out if this idea is actually workable. Will people use condoms that they've got via mobile phone? Once you know that your audience is interested, that your competition aren't doing it and it's going to make you first to market, then look, set about preparing a written business case. Okay, so what's the second step in the process? The second step is then to put it into writing and I would suggest it's put into a concept paper first which is more of a broad concept rather than uh, specifics. So you need to put there what your actual idea is and how that idea is going to be executed and what the impact is going to be on the company in terms of overall objectives plus financial costs. Okay. And with the costs, don't we need to have some accurate figures? I mean, shouldn't we have all the quotes and all the details? to be able to assess the case? Absolutely, at a certain stage. But I think if you are experienced in putting ideas forward um, or you're speaking to people who are experienced in putting ideas forward, you need to have an overall budget. I think to go to the effort of breaking it down line by line before you've had it accepted um, is probably too much of a waste of time uh, in, the, in the early stages. Okay, now what about management of risks? because there's, there's risk of opportunity lost, isn't Correct. there? Correct, yes. Well, I think that is the biggest risk in that we, can, we all have great ideas and sometimes we're scared to put them forward because we, we think it, may, it, might not, it might be silly. And the, the example I gave before about condoms via text message, well, it sounds like quite a ludicrous suggestion, but it was one of our more successful initiatives. So I think the opportunity cost is, is the greatest cost to the company. And if you've done your research with your market and knowing your competitors, then I think... Um, you can put it forward in such a way that whatever risk there may be, if you write it in such a way, it should be risk of not pursuing the opportunity, not risk of pursuing the opportunity. And how is the time frame for a business case managed? Do you need to actually map it out over one year or what time frame? I, I think that, de that differs depending upon the idea and, and the initiative. Um, and I think that obviously if you have a long lead time, then you're more likely to mitigate the risk that we've just talked about, but also you can sometimes miss an opportunity. So I do think you need to balance, balance the idea as to whether or not you want to be first to market what your competitors are doing um, to, to, make your, to make the impact that you need. So it could also have long-term impact. For example, we buy market share throughout Australia and some of that has a very long lead time when we decide, for example, that we need to buy more market share in Queensland. It could take us you know, from six to six months to two years before we in fact purchase the majority of that market share. Whereas uh, going out to market with a new website, the, the actual planning and the execution of that might take 12 months, but the idea itself can be approved in a very short space of time. And how and when do you need to set up any measures of, of whether this thing is successful? Like, is it right back at the beginning that you suggest? That? I think measuring success should happen right from the word go because you're not going to learn if you don't measure your success. And I think that if you work for the right company who's prepared to listen to your ideas, then even if you measure your idea and it ends up that it's not as successful as you like, you can use that information for the next submission that you make. I think you monitor everything from the moment you put the submission in until the execution of it and certainly post-execution you need to look at how successful it's been. Now what if your business case doesn't actually have a sort of financial return on investment so it's something about safety or it's an improvement in customer satisfaction or some other thing what what how does that work? If it doesn't have a financial return um, then I think you obviously need to look at the financial outlay, but businesses are not just measured on profitability, they're also measured on, on internal successes such as re retention of staff, motivation of, of the people that you work with, plus as you talked about in the health industry, we need to have a quality of care and make sure our, our patients are well looked after. So there, there's no less legitimacy in putting forward a plan that looks at um, internal controls 
over and above financial, I think they're just as important. Can you think of a time where you've put forward a business case to your board um, and the owners in the UK and it was rejected and how you dealt with that and why it was rejected? Many times I've been rejected over the years. I think it, it is about know. again, it's about knowing your audience. And so the first few um, business cases that I've put forward to my board, by virtue of the fact that they didn't know me and I didn't know them, they did reject them. And possibly because I was asking for millions of pounds and they didn't know me, so they said no. So I think it is knowing the people who are going to be receiving it, talking in the language that's going to resonate with them. And in the instance of my board, it, it, there is generally two parts that resonate with them. One is looking after women and children, improving things like contraceptive prevalence rates and, and, and successful birth rates. And the other is also uh, a financial returns on investment so that those monies can be used to help women and children around the world access safe family planning and, and sexual health services. So there are two very distinct measures. And so I now, everything I write to them, I put within the context of these are the outcomes that you will have. And they also want to know that it's not going to dilute my time or my team's time from the overall goal of um, market share. So it is very much about knowing your audience and we all get rejected and we all get knocked on the head and you just have to go back and, and, and try again. I also think you talk to people, ask people who, who are more experienced than you and have done it many times for their assistance and input. And when you put forward a business case, how important is it to actually say, I or this other person will project manage this through because you might get a great business case but then how do you know that it's going to actually be set up in the way and managed in the way that will make it successful? It's the most important thing because I think it's important for two reasons. Uh, one reason is surely if the person is putting forward an idea then they need to have ownership of that idea, they need to be excited by that idea and motivated by it and if they are those things then they would want to have ownership of it. But also if someone puts a business case forward to me, again as I said earlier, I don't want to do their thinking for them, but you are assuming that they're coming to you with knowledge of a local market, therefore a local person is better able to execute that plan than someone who's sitting in our case in a head office scenario. So what do you do if you've got a great business case, you know it's terrific and it's really watertight, but there is one person somewhere along the line who is a blocker? I don't think you should ever let anyone get in your way and I think your enthusiasm should push you through some of that. So you need to find out what it is from that person that they're not liking about your business case and, and scenario and then mould it to, to better suit that person. But also, again, just don't keep doing it in writing. Go and talk to them. Take them out for lunch if that's going to work. Do whatever you need to do to get an audience with that person so that you can talk to them about your idea and hear what their resistance is because Sometimes it may just be uh, some small tweaking that needs to happen. If it's a complete reluctance um, to go through with the idea, then I think you probably need to set it aside and try again later with a different tact. But often it's just tweaking. Thank you, Suzanne. Well, I hope you get your business case through listening to Suzanne's advice. Thank you. Mm -hmm.